Google Calendar Tips and Tricks. Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, I'll be showing you guys some of the tips and tricks that I've learned along the way with Google Calendar. Now, firstly, Google Calendar is super easy to edit. To edit or create any type of event, you can simply do a double click on the date. This will open up all the times. For example, I want to set up a lunch for 12 to 2. I can just hold my icon over here. And once I do a double click, I can add the event. So if I add the title of the event, like so, and then I can add the start and finish time like this. And after that, I can click on save. Now, another really amazing thing that you can do with Google Calendar is that if we have an event, so I'll just go on ahead, open up the monthly view like this. Now, with our particular monthly view, let's say I have this marketing consultancy. So if I want to move this, I can simply hold it and move it along the week. So I can move it like so, and I can change this appointment availability for that particular week or for all weeks like so. Now, this is because I have set up my availability on my Google Calendar. You can click on the bottom right and you can click on create new calendar and create different calendars for different purposes. This can include things such as your personal and your work life. And we'll see on the right, you even have a section that entails a task section. So over here, if you want to change your appointment times, click on your settings and you can click on your settings over here. On the left, you will have your settings for your calendars. And in my calendar settings, this is my name, Lily, and we have our calendar events. And then after that, we also have access and permissions. We can remove a pre-existing calendar like so, and all events or appointments would be removed. But keep in mind, if I've added a appointment schedule within Google, it's going to keep that same appointment schedule. I can click on the appointment schedule over here to further customize it. So you guys can see you have the option to get a free trial. And within your free trial, you can click on start trial, click on agree to receive your free trial of the Google One. And this is a 31 day free trial to check out appointment scheduling with Google. Now I'll show you guys what it looks like if this was a regular calendar. You can see I have this one-on-one -on -one with Lily as an appointment over here as well on my other calendar. Whereas if this was a regular old calendar like this, you can see it does not have any types of appointments which you can create. Now, one thing to note is that you can only create one singular appointment schedule on the free plan on Google. If you want to build two different types of appointments, you have to create a Google One subscription and you have a 31 day free trial. Now, another really important thing that you can do with the Google Calendar is you can set up Gmail invites. So if I am creating an event like so, so let's say this is going to be a ball. And then after that, I can find a time over here and let's say the ball timings are going to be 7 to 11. After that, you can see the specific time. And then you also have your time zone. Now, this is really important because whenever you are hosting events, and if you have virtual events that are going to entail participants from other regions, you want them to have the ability to join at an appropriate time. So to make sure that the time zone that you're selecting or the time that you are selecting is appropriate for the other person, you can select that time zone and see what time it is going to be for them. You can use a separate start and end time zone. And then after that, you can click on add guests to add your guests like so. Once you do that, you have suggested times and you will see a suggested time that will be brought up from their calendar. And if you have multiple different guests, you will get suggested times that are going to be linked to all of their calendars. So Google basically will see if any of their schedules collide and you can see suggested times for all of my attendees. Then you can modify your guest permissions, including inviting others, seeing the guest list and modifying the event. You can add whether or not you're joining with Google Meet. And then after that, you can add a location, description, a Google Drive attachment, and you can further color code the event. And you can mark yourself as either busy or free for that particular time. You can also set the visibility of the event, as well as when you want to receive a notification. If you want it 30 minutes before, one hour before, 15 minutes before, or more. 
Now, another really amazing thing with Google Calendar is you can click on more options. And when you click on more options, you see a further detailed version, which can help you in just having a full view of what it's going to look like. Then once you click on send, a mail invitation will be sent to all of the participants. Now, what happens if you reschedule an event? Well, simply drag and drop the event to the next date or to the next time. When you do this, keep in mind that you can choose to update emails to existing Google Calendar guests and click on send. This will send a secondary invite to your participants within your Google Calendar or within that particular event. Now on the top left, you have the ability not only to create events or just by clicking on the date, but you can select a task as well. So you can click on task over here and you can build different lists for tasks and add tasks onto your calendar. And you can click on appointment schedule to set up your appointment schedule on Google. Keep in mind that this appointment schedule is going to be singular. So if you are adding this for your work, you can add that. If this is just going to be your occupied time where you're doing your nine to five, you can add that. But keep in mind that this appointment schedule is going to allow people to book you. So book an appointment with you. So if this is going to be your free time, so let's say you're trying to set up an appointment schedule for your side hustle then you're going to alter your times for your side hustle time. So let's say I am doing 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. And if I want to replicate this time for all of the dates, I will click on this, copy time to all, and this will copy the time to all of the events, so on and so forth. You can also go on ahead and set up a scheduling window. So how far advanced in the future do you want to accept bookings? Let's say you don't want any bookings for you know a month from now because you're not certain if a month from now you are going to be in the same location or if you want to you know still be doing the same thing so you can set up your scheduling window as well you can also set up start and end dates for this particular type of booking so let's say i want to start this type of booking today and it ends let's say in five days for example or two days let's say you're doing a two-day workshop and you're trying to just build an appointment scheduler for that this is going to be my workshop. So like so, you can set up limited time availability bookings as well. After that, you can also adjust this particular date's availability, especially if you've added your bookings as your primary source of booking. So if you're taking a day off or if you are, you know, doing something else, you can set up a adjusted availability. You can also set up your booking settings to add 10 minutes of buffer time or five minutes so let's say I want to add five minutes of buffer times and I don't want guests to be able to invite others. And then after that, you can sync it with your calendars to make sure everything fits in your times. Now, once you do that, you can click on this and you can open your booking page and you will be able to see your booking page that you have created with Google. And then people can book appointments with you directly from Google. Instead of having to pay for something that's expensive and utilizes pretty much the same things. Now, another really amazing thing about the Google Calendar is that all of this can be done with the click of a keyboard simply by pressing the question mark. So when you press the question mark on your keyboard, you will see keyboard shortcuts for everything. So for announcements, for applications, actions, all types of functions of the Google Calendar, you have a shortcut and whatever are the relevant shortcuts for you, you can go on ahead and view them. So announce event guests, let's say I want to do alt three, so I can go on ahead and press alt three for that particular shortcut, whatever is going to be, you know, the most used by you. Not only that, but you can click on the top right where you are able to take notes from Google Calendar instantaneously. And then you also have Google Tasks integrated. So directly from your calendar, you can add your tasks or whatever task list you have created on your phone or on your devices. You can drag and drop tasks. So let's say I have to buy groceries like this. I can drag and drop this task into any time like this on my Google Calendar, which will help me in scheduling all of my workflows easily. And that is how you can utilize Google Calendar. I hope you guys did find this video helpful. And if you did find this video helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or queries, leave those in the comment box down below.